Hey everybody, how's it going? Today we're going to be going over and showing you how to install the airlift load lifter airbags here on our 2019 Ford F-150. So airbags are going to be a great option for your F-150 here if you find yourself to be doing a lot of towing or hauling. So the reason we might need airbags is when we have a heavy load in the bed of our truck or we have a trailer coupled, the rear end of the truck is actually going to sag down a little bit due to that weight. Now that rear end sag, it's going to cause a number of different problems. So aside from just looking funky, no one necessarily wants the rear end of their truck to be sagging lower than the front. But something that a lot of people don't realize, and you really wouldn't actually know this until you got in your vehicle and you started towing, is that the reduced stopping power we're going to have when the rear of our truck is squatting down there is actually quite significant. Now, the reason it affects our braking is because the majority of our braking force is going to be on the front axle. Usually about 60% of the vehicle's brakes is going to be on the front axle. So when we're taking weight off of that front axle and transferring it, we're going to be reducing our stopping power. So another thing we could experience with a heavy load in the bed of our truck, this is more pro prolonged use, and that's going to be our existing suspension components wearing down faster. Therefore, we're going to have to replace stuff like the jount springs or the leaf springs much sooner than we would have if we're just towing normally or not towing at all. So if we come over to the front of the truck, there's going to be a few things going on here as well. Now, number one, you won't notice initially, but you will notice it over time again with prolonged use. And that's going to be an irregular wear pattern on the front tires. Now, the reason this occurs is because again, we're transferring weight from the front to the rear. Therefore, the alignment adjustments of the front end suspension won't be within the factory specifications. Therefore, we're not going to get proper and even wear on our front tires. And then sort of another minor issue, if we find ourselves to be towing or hauling at night, our headlight aim isn't going to be ideal. We're going to be shining other motorists in the eyes, and we're not going to be getting the best view of the road ahead. So to give you a little bit better visual representation of the difference our airbag is going to make, so right now we don't have any weight in the bed, we don't have a trailer attached, and we just have the factory suspension. So granted, all trucks are going to have a factory rake, meaning the rear is going to be higher than the front. We are going to kind of show you how much of a difference these airbags make when we're loaded versus unloaded. So again, unloaded factory suspension. We're going to measure from the ground to the top inside edge of the wheel well. That's going to be right at 40 inches. Now let's jump up to the front and take that same measurement. And then at the front here, we got 37 and a half, so about a two and a half inch rake from the factory. So just as a point of reference, we have about 1,500 pounds on our truck bed here. So what we're gonna do next is retake our measurements. So at the rear here, we're looking at about 36 and a half inches. Therefore, we actually dropped about three and a half inches at the rear. Let's head to the front and retake that same measurement. So if we come to the front here, we're looking at about 38 inches. Therefore, we actually raised the front end about a half inch, which may not seem like much, but that's actually quite substantial. And it is gonna attribute to some of those issues that we talked about earlier. So now we're headed over to our test course here, the speed bump course in particular. Now we do have a good amount of weight for this truck here, so we really should be able to see some of the effects. Yeah, and right away, it's definitely bouncing around a lot there in the rear. The steering wheel is also jarting side to side there, those bumps. Now we're over here at our solemn course. We're just gonna get up to speed. We're gonna make some evasive maneuvers here. So yeah, we're definitely getting a lot of body roll here with that weight back there, shifting back and forth. So now that we have our airbags installed, we went ahead and put the weight back in the truck bed here so we could retake our measurements. And at the rear here, we're looking at right about 40 inches. Therefore, we're at the factory ride height here in the rear. And then at the front here, we're right just a little bit over 37 and a half. So we're almost back to the factory ride height in the front as well. So now we're gonna head back over to our test course here with our weight in the bed and our airbags installed. So we're gonna be going over the speed bump course first. And so the suspension definitely feels a little bit stiffer. Um, that's sort of the thing that people don't understand with suspension enhancements that in order to provide more support, we do have to stiffen the suspension. But one thing that I did notice is I'm not bouncing around, I'm not bucking around as much. I feel a little bit more in control of the truck here. 
So now we're gonna head over to the slalom course here, get up to speed and make some evasive maneuvers. So even after those first couple turns there, definitely don't have near as much body roll as we did before without the airbags. So here's what our airbags look like installed. As you can see here, we have a nice double bellow design. Everything's made of a thick, heavy duty rubber. And if we hold up the factory jounce spring, which our airbag replaces, you can see there's quite a big difference. So one of the improvements you'll notice is our factory jounce springs won't even actually engage until we reach a certain threshold. With our airbags here, we can set these up to engage instantly. So there's quite a few different suspension enhancement options on the market. Airbags are truly the best. And the reason why is we can adjust the air inside the airbags for the perfect mix between support and comfort. Therefore, no matter which trailer we're towing, we're always gonna have the most ideal towing experience and ride comfort. And furthermore, when we're not towing, we can decrease the pressure inside the airbags so we have a completely factory-like ride quality. So the first step of our installation, we're gonna come underneath the vehicle here. If you want to, you can remove the spare tire and the spare tire heat shield to give you some more room to work. It's not actually required though, but we're gonna to come to either side here. We're gonna be looking for the factory jounce bumper. So here's what that looks like. So we need to go ahead and remove this using a 13 millimeter socket. You're gonna need a six inch extension as well. And the bolt is actually located in the center of that going into the frame. So we've already loosened ours. There is some Loctite on this bolt here, so it is kind of challenging, but just take your time. You should be able to get it out without issue. But now we can set this aside. We will not be reusing either the jounce spring or the bolt. So once we have the jounce spring removed, we're gonna take the M10 flange head bolt that comes in your kit. It's one of the two only black bolts that come in there, so it's pretty easy to identify. We're simply gonna thread this in to the weld nut that we just removed the jounce spring from. So we're gonna thread this in until we have about a half inch between the bottom of the frame and that bolt head there. So about like that. So now we're gonna take one of our two upper brackets. So these are labeled L for left and R for right. We're working on the passenger side, so we're gonna grab the one that says R. And if you'll notice here, there's gonna be a keyway in the upper bracket. We're gonna slide the bolt head from the bolt we just installed through that, and then we're gonna push it flush to the frame to align it with that slot there. Just like so. And once we have that on there and flush to the frame, we're gonna go ahead and snug up our bolt here. So now we're gonna take a 15 millimeter wrench. We're gonna go ahead and tighten our bolt down the rest of the way. We wanna make sure that we're keeping pressure on the bracket to pin it against the frame. So your instructions actually give us a torque spec for this bolt here, but unfortunately there isn't any real way to get a socket and wrench on there. So we're just gonna be tightening this as best we can with our box wrench. So, that's going to be the case for a lot of these fasteners throughout this installation. You're not really going to be able to get a torque wrench on there. So we're just going to be tightening them by hand as best we can with our open-ended box wrench. Fortunately, none of these bolts really require a lot of torque, so we really shouldn't run into too many issues down the line. So once we get the upper bracket secure, we're going to turn our attention to the lower leaf spring perch, which is welded to the axle. So what we need to do is there's going to be a bracket attached to that perch. We're gonna remove this bolt here with a 10 millimeter socket. Once we get that out, we're gonna go ahead and pull this bracket back. And then between the leaf spring and the wheel here, we're gonna have a little standoff tab with another fastener holding our ABS line on. So we need to remove that. We're gonna just sneak a trim panel tool under that clip there so we can just pry it up. Just like so. So now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our lower bracket here. So these are the same for both sides. We don't have to worry about mixing them up. And we're just gonna mock it up, setting it into position 
just like so. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that we're at factory ride height so we don't have the rear of the truck in the air or anything like that. We're gonna measure the distance between the bottom of the top plate and the top of the bottom plate. And if that's between six and three quarter inches and seven and a half inches, we're gonna be using the included spacer that comes in your kit. Now for our particular application, I've already measured this for you. It comes in at about six and a quarter, therefore we're not gonna be using the spacer. So the next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to be removing the lower bracket. We were just using that as a mock-up. So we need to pay attention to the orientation of this lower bracket here. So we're going to be starting over on the passenger side, so it needs to be oriented like this for this next step. We also need to make sure that this flange here is going to be facing the ground. And what we're going to do is we're going to take one of our carriage bolts, looks like this. We'll simply be placing it through that hole like so. And we're going to go ahead and flip this bracket around. So now we're going to take our air spring assembly, one of the two, it doesn't matter which. So we need to flip this around to where we have the bottom. So the top's easy to identify because we have the inflation port. So we're going to flip that around. Here's what the bottom looks like. We're first going to be placing on a roll plate and then we're going to be lining up the mounting holes. And then we're actually going to be mounting this to our lower bracket. So I'm going to take our lower bracket here. I first want to note that the inflation port is going to be on this side and then we're going to place on our lower bracket like so. So we need to make sure that the inflation port is on the same side as our carriage bolt. We're just going to roughly set that into position and now we're going to come back with our bag attachment hardware. So in your kit you're going to get a separate bag. These are all fine threaded bolts so you'll easily be able to distinguish these from the rest of the hardware. We get two different sizes of these. The longer ones you're going to be using if you have the included spacer. The shorter ones here are going to be without the spacer. So since we're not using the spacer, we have these smaller ones. We're first going to place on a split lock washer, a flat washer, and then we're going to go ahead and attach the lower bracket to the airbag. So something else I need to point out that you can see we have three different slots of holes here. We're going to be using the forward most ones for the attachment. So they're the ones that are going to be on the side with our carriage bolt. And this part can get a little confusing, so feel free to reference the installation, the, uh, installation instructions. They have some good diagrams in there. So you can see we have both of our bolts inserted now. We're just going to be tightening these up finger tight. We're not going to be using any tools to tighten these at this step. So now that we have our hardware finger tight, we're actually going to flip the airbag over and we're going to be installing our inflation port. So this is what it looks like. It simply just threads in the top valve here on the bag. So they're kind of tricky to get started, but we're going to be tightening this as much as we can by hand. And then we're going to take a 7 16 inch wrench and we're going to tighten it an additional one and a half turns. So just like that. So now that we have our lower airbag assembly complete, we can go ahead and set it into position on the vehicle. So these little ears here, these are going to go around the leaf spring perch. Just like so. Just want to go ahead and get this into position. Make sure we're not pinching any lines. But now since it's sitting there, you can see that we have the threaded hole in the leaf spring perch. We're going to go ahead and reattach our bracket there. And then in your kit, you're going to get these self-threading bolts. We're going to thread that through the hole there in the leaf spring perch with our bracket in between. And then we're going to take a half inch socket and wrench. We're going to go ahead and tighten this down. So if we come around to the back side, we're going to have another hole there. This one is not threaded. We're going to go ahead and thread it using our self threading bolt. So now we don't have a torque spec for either of these. We're just sort of going to be tightening it by feel here with our ratchet. We don't want to go too tight, but we do need to make sure they're snug.
this rear one here, you are going to feel some more resistance because we're actually making the threads. So now we're going to take one of the other carriage bolts that comes in our kit here. We're going to come on this other side of the bracket, simply drop it through there like so. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this axle strap here that comes in your kit. I'm going to place it over both of our carriage bolts. And then we have these serrated flange nuts that are going to go on. So while we're tightening these, these are actually one of the few nuts we can actually torque to spec. But while we're tightening these, we just want to make sure that we have an even amount on both sides of our carriage bolt. We also want to make sure that we're not pinching any lines or wires when we're tightening these down. So it is actually going to go on, not necessarily straight up and down. But now we're going to go ahead and tighten these using a 9 16 inch socket and ratchet. And again, we want to alternate back and forth here. And we will be using a torque wrench to torque these down to spec. So now we're going to come back to the top of the air spring here. We're going to take one of our roll plates. We want to make sure that the radius edge of the roll plate is facing down towards the bag. We're going to simply slide that into position, lining up the larger hole on the roll plate with the inflation port on our airbag. So this does kind of remind me, if you have trouble getting your air spring into position, more than likely you're going to need to lift the frame of the truck from the axle, let the axle hang free a little bit. So you more than likely will need to do that to get the air spring into position but we already have it supported now, which is why there's gonna be a gap here. So we're gonna slowly bring down the frame to close the gap between the air spring and the top bracket here. We wanna close the gap till we get about an eighth of an inch or so. So now we're gonna be securing the upper bracket to the top of our air spring. So this part's a little tricky just cause it's kinda of hard to see what you're doing. You're gonna be doing most of it by feel, but we're gonna need two of our fine threaded bolts in the combination of split lock washer and flat washer it's pretty much the same attachment method we, we use to attach the air spring to the bottom bracket. But now what we're going to do is we're going to have to align our roll plate here, but there's going to be two holes on the top side of this upper bracket, and that should align with the holes in our air spring here. So we're just going to do as best we can to thread those into the holes there. And again, we may have to actually adjust the roll plate here to get everything to line up. So now that we have the air spring secured to the upper bracket, we're going to come outside the vehicle here, inside the fender well. We're going to take the U-bolt that comes in our kit, we're going to be sliding that up and over the frame. Normally we're just going to be able to take our U-bolt, we're going to slide it over the frame like so, and then we can just rotate it down into position. Now unfortunately this truck here has a side plate for a gooseneck hitch, the fifth wheel hitches will be similar, therefore we're going to have to do a little bit of maneuvering to get our U-bolt into position. So we're actually going to have to just sort of force it in there a little bit. Uh, we do actually have to bend the U-bolt just a slight bit to get it into position, but we're just going to be forcing it over there like so. So now that we have our U-bolt into position, we're going to have to align it. There's going to be a hole on either side of this bracket here that we're gonna align the U-bolt with. Now yours is probably gonna go in a little bit easier. We actually had to bend ours, so now we have to bend it back to get it into position. But once we do get it into position, we're gonna take our serrated flange nuts, and we're gonna thread one on to each side of the U-bolt. Once we have those on, we'll go ahead and tighten and torque these down to the specifications in our instructions. So now we're going to simply align the air spring front to back to get it centered over the axle, and then we can just tighten everything down. So again, for the bolts that attach the plates to the airbag, you really can't get a uh, socket and wrench on there, so you're just going to have to take a box ended wrench like here. It's going to be a 9 16 and we're just going to tighten it as best we can by hand. So now that we've finished tightening everything down over here on the passenger side, we're going to be repeating those same steps over on the driver's side. Now there is one small difference over on the driver's side. So you can see this silver bracket here that's attached to the rear axle. 
So there's a few clips on the end of there. There's an ABS line clip, and there's a clip for our wiring harness that looks like that. So we need to remove those two clips and then trim that bracket. There's gonna be a little circular cutout here. We're just gonna simply trim on the other side of that. But once we have that trimmed, everything is gonna be pretty much the same as on the passenger side that we just showed you. So the next thing we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be routing our air lines from each of the airbags to a point on the rear of the truck here where we wish to mount our inflation valves. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now and then I'll show you the path we took. I'm simply gonna take our coil of airline tubing here, I'm gonna cut it in half and then attach one to each of our bags and then route it to the rear. So we've got our airlines routed to the rear here. So we're coming directly off the bag on the top. We're just gonna show you the passenger side. It'll be the same for the driver's side. So in order to attach the airline to the top fitting on the bag, it's a push to lock fitting. So we'll simply just cut the line square, push it into the fitting and then pull out to lock it in place. And you can see our airline comes open over here. We wanna make sure you give yourself some extra slack here to allow the suspension to travel up and down. But we do, however, need to be careful of the exhaust over here on the passenger side. So here's our airline tubing. We have a couple zip ties to keep it in place. And then we have one up top here. And then basically from here, I just went up and over the spare tire over all those crossings and cross beams. And then we have it coming out here. And I pretty much just did that exact same thing over on the driver's side. But now that we have both of our inflation valves towards the rear here, we need to find a place to go ahead and mount them. So I think the best location for us to mount our inflation valves is actually using the two studs that are used to mount your license plate. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and remove your license plate and now we're gonna take a 5 16 inch drill bit. We're gonna open up both of these holes here. So on the back side of this little plastic panel here, there's going to be a standoff tab. That's what was used to screw into. We need to go ahead and get rid of that. Um, if you can take a pair of snips or if you can fit maybe a Dremel tool or a Sawzall blade up in there, we need to go ahead and knock those tabs off. So here's what that standoff tab looks like. And luckily they're actually pretty thin. So we can just take a razor knife like we have here and just simply cut that off. We want to try to cut it as flush as we can to the back side of that plastic there. Let's go ahead and grab that now. So before we insert the inflation valve through the license plate hole, what we're going to do is we're going to take one of our jam nuts here. We're going to thread that all the way on, all the way to the back. And then we're gonna place one of these star in a, uh, conical tooth washers on there. And then we're gonna come around to the back there and stick that through the hole. So now we're gonna reinstall our license plate. We're gonna place a flat washer followed by our rubber washer. Now grab onto the back so you don't push it through. And then we'll go ahead and thread on our other jam nut. And once we have that on, we'll use a wrench on the back side to hold one of our jam nuts. And then we'll go ahead and tighten down this one here. Once we get it past a certain point, the star washer should catch on the back side and we don't have to hold it with a wrench anymore. Now we're going to go ahead and inflate our system so we can check for leaks. So we're gonna spray down each of our fittings and what we're looking for is rapid forming bubbles. So we're using a soapy water solution and if we did have rapid forming bubbles, that's gonna indicate a leak. Therefore, we need to recut our line or re-secure the fitting. And that's gonna do it today for our look and installation of the Airlift Load Lifter Airbags here on our 2019 Ford F-150.